Today we're taking an in-depth look at the QRS Player Piano. We have this beautiful GL10 equipped with the QRS system, and we'll be looking at the QRS Music App, some of its functionality, and how to connect it to your piano. Hi, this is Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Today we have more of an instructional video on how to get the most out of your QRS player piano. A player piano is a really fun device that will play music for you as if there was a concert pianist in your home. Uh, if you are interested in player pianos, this might be a fun video to see technology and where it is today in the 21st century. The player piano has an origin that dates all the way back to the 19th century where, uh, you know, rolls were placed in old uprights and there was, you know, a lot of air being pumped into them, but uh, the system would, would replicate playing through a, basically a series of punched holes in paper. And, and, you know, where we are today with technology, it's really cool that they've kind of merged into a replicating piano that can have a concert pianist in your home playing as loud as you want and playing exactly what you want, selecting from a list of thousands of songs. Uh, so today the QRS app is what we're going to be looking at, the QRS music app. This GL10, this Kawhi in front of me, does have the QRS system already installed. The nice thing about QRS is it is a system that can be installed on pretty much any piano. So the technology um, is able to find, you know, if you find a piano that you really love, um, whether it's a used older piano or whether it's a new piano, um, you're able to add this technology on. And there are technicians throughout the country that are able to do that. Um, I will say that um, through years of experience of seeing these be installed, there is different levels of technicians that will do better and, you know, worse jobs at installation. Um, but it's never, it's never something where, you can't go back and get things touched up the right way. Um, and so that is something that, and then sometimes when, when these pianos do move around, if it's been set up in your house and you know something's not, not working exactly right, sometimes they do need uh, a fresh technician visit. That is something that I wouldn't say happens often, but it's not something out of the ordinary where you should panic, oh, it's, it's playing off or it's not, it sounds like someone's playing too rapidly or too slow. Um, it's usually a calibration issue. Um, and the person who installed your, your unit should be able to resolve that. Um, and if not, you can always contact QRS um, and find another technician in your area. Um, but it's a really great, great product um, because again, it virtually can be installed on any instrument. Um, and the process is, uh, it's kind of elaborate and it doesn't, it's not something where you just plug it in and it's ready to go, but it takes a couple weeks for it to get installed. Um, and it's basically firing off um, a player system underneath each of the keys, a sol solenoid um, is firing off. Uh, what's interesting is, and I'll, and I'll point this out, there's only 80 keys that it will cover. So it covers the majority. It doesn't cover, I think, the top four and the bottom four. Um, so those, those notes will never be played on the instrument. Um, and that is so that they can, you know, key beds and key lengths are all a little bit different. Um, and the way pianos are manufactured are all a little bit different. Most songs are not playing those bottom notes or those top notes. So it does cut off on both ends. Um, but really just great technology. QRS has a rich history of making uh, piano rolls. Um, and so we're actually going to be doing a video on QRS's history. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's very cool because they're able to take all, um, you know, all the stuff that they have in their library, all those thousands and thousands of rolls, and take that and apply it to their digital library, um, which we're gonna look at here in a second. Um, so I have, I'm screen recording on here so that we can you know, overlay what I'm doing on the phone to what will be happening in your, on your phone once you download the application um, or on an iPad uh, or a tablet. Uh, I really kind of recommend getting a standalone device for operating your unit. Uh, it is, especially if you're going to be doing, uh, not connecting it to your, your internet. Um, if you're using this as just a standalone unit, uh, standalone means that it's just going to be connecting from your phone or from your tablet to the device and there's no Wi-Fi connectivity. I would recommend getting kind of a separate tablet or a separate phone um, for, for, that, for that purpose. Um, the only reason I say that is because, and it happens all the time here in the store, your, your phone wants to connect to your Wi-Fi network that is... Uh, in either your house or in your building. Um, and so 
you know, the first step to connecting is going to be going through your settings. So I'm going to go to settings here. Um, you're going to go to Wi-Fi. Um, and on Wi-Fi, uh, in, in the dropdown of, you know, maybe your home network or your, wherever, you know, the church network, wherever it is, you're going to see QRS, PNO, and then a series of, of numbers. And so that is going to be connecting to the device that uh, when it's turned on, it will recognize it. So this is an emit, emitting a Wi-Fi network. So you want to connect Wi-Fi. A lot of people always look in Bluetooth because we're so used to connecting via Bluetooth to our audio devices. It is going to be in the Wi-Fi function of your phone. So we're connected to the QRS PNO315353. That is this unit here. Um, we will exit out of there. Um, and then you also want to make sure you have the QRS Music app downloaded. So you probably want to download that first because once you're connected to the Wi-Fi here, it's going to be hard to download an application via Wi-Fi because it's not connected to the internet. So I already have the QRS PNO um, application downloaded. Again, it's called QRS Music. We're going to click on that, um, and you know it might say can't find something. You just hit retry in the corner, but you'll see right there it's it's recognizing the PNO 312, the series of numbers. We're going to click that right there. Um, this is, you know, when you are connecting to the, uh, the QRS unit, you are going to need a password. Um, and so the password will usually be, uh, it will usually be given by the person that you've purchased the QRS from. Um, sometimes you do need to call QRS and read them the serial number on your QRS that device, so the, the serial number that's on the box underneath the instrument, and they will provide a code. That code is really essential for you unlocking the potential of your QRS. That code's going to unlock the full functionality for uh, for 12 months. So so that is, you know, that's your registering with QRS saying I bought a QRS, a new system, here's my serial number, I want to activate my free year of your library. Um, so that is a really important code. Um, there also is a password sometimes that you need when you're connecting to the to the um, to the Wi-Fi the first time. Um, and so all that all that will be done usually from the person that you're purchasing from. Uh, or from QRS, and then you'll need you'll need the the password, and you'll need uh, you'll need that uh, the serial number to unlock the the, uh, the technology. So here we are on the home screen. Uh, welcome to QRS Pianomation. You know they always are having different shows that are coming up, uh, different ways to take advantage of your system, um, and so you'll always kind of see a different uh, you know some different I would call them. Uh, not billboards, but you know the the scroll of, of content on the top is going to be is going to be changed out. You see Johnny Cash, um, Lang Lang was up there, uh, but you know they have categories here. You know you can go to all songs, to artists, new releases, genres. The cool thing about QRS is they're always updating their system with new roles that they've imported into their library. So I did a video on QRS. I want to say it was you know two years ago, maybe three years ago. When I talked to them, their library was, you know, they didn't give me a, a hard number, but they said it was around 11,000, maybe 12,000. That number's already jumped up to about 15,000. Uh, so they're always constantly adding whatever they have access to, whatever they have the rights to, and they're, and they're pushing it into their system. So that is something that will continue to grow. Uh, Curus has a subscription service. So after your first year of using the, the software, you do have the option to buy a two-year program or a four-year program where it keeps the whole entire system unlocked for you in your library. And um, if you if you vote, hey, I, you know, I don't I don't really want to do that, or I'm just going to do the the seven thousand uh, the seven thousand included songs. I believe that's the number now. So uh, so they give you a complimentary library after your subscription service, um, and that's something that you will have access to forever with your unit. Um, what's really nice is. If you ever pay for the subscription service, you know you try it for two years, you pay the subscription price, it will keep track of what your 75 most played songs. It's 75, um, I've heard rumors of 150, but 75 most played songs over that time period, and they will give you all 75 of those at the end of it. So you're adding to your library. Purchasing songs individually, you can do that as well. So you can add uh, individual titles um, and go back and purchase what you know what you specifically like after the years after you get that year trial you can say hey I really liked X Y and Z let's go back and purchase um, so let's go into uh, the all songs 
So all songs you can sort very easily through all the songs. I, you know, I only have, I have the dealer um, login on this. So they give us a sample of, of dealer songs that are on here. Um, and uh, that's what we have connectivity to here in the store. But as you can see, uh, you know, it's not the easiest way to sort through things. It's kind of by title. Um, but if you look here at the bottom, you can search. There's a search function. Um, you can search by albums. We'll click albums, um, look at different album names. You can look at artists. Uh, sometimes it's an easier way to kind of sort through. Um, and then genres, this is nice because you can look up, most, on most QRS installations, there will be a speaker system that is included on there. Uh, so the difference between a solo piano where the, just the instrument is firing off to an accompaniment piano where the, uh, the speaker and like maybe there'll be a voice or there'll be violins or guitars or drums or full accompaniment with the player piano. Um, so you can look at here, you say, hey, I wanna listen to Christmas music with accompaniment. You would click on, on the genre and it would give you the list that way. Uh, so that's kind of functionality of searching for things. You can also make custom made playlists. Right now I haven't made any, so there's no playlist on mine. Uh, but when you're looking at songs, you can definitely click here and you can add a song to playlist. You can add album to playlist. You can go to the artist. Um, and you know it tells you when the when the expiration on this this unit will be for us here in the store. Um, but it kind of it kind of gives you the, the breakdown really kind of intuitive as you've used technology over the years. You know here we are in 2022, um, and uh, you know a lot of the same features that you see on other applications applies here. Um, one of the most common things we ask is how do I adjust the volume on a piano or on my player piano? Uh, so there's a couple different things. Uh, first off. Playing, you know, the, the actual functionality of the unit is somebody playing the piano, it being recorded, and it replicating that. Because the piano has to have a certain amount of input for the hammer to go up and strike the strings, it is important to realize there's only going to be a certain threshold where, where you will start losing playing, you'll start losing notes being played because you've turned the volume down too low. So it doesn't happen on a lot of them, but if you turn the volume all the way down, some of the notes don't make contact with the strings because it's trying to, it's trying to decrease the sensitivity of, of the note being struck. Um, it doesn't really happen on that many, but that is one of the reasons why there is kind of a threshold of not being able to turn it down to like a whisper. It's because your strings, the hammer striking the strings just wouldn't happen. The dynamic range wouldn't be there. Uh, so I've clicked the volume knob here at the top. Um, that volume knob is going to have your master volume, your audio volume, and your piano volume. Uh, so what are those? Master volume is the whole unit together, turning down uh, you know, the dynamic range of voice, piano, accompaniment, all that stuff. Your master volume slider is going to adjust that. Your audio volume is going to be just the accompaniment that is going to be, hey, for whatever reason, in this place, in my, in my house, the drums are really loud and the, and the voice are really loud, but the piano isn't as loud. So you can actually go in and adjust that. This is you know, considered a mixer, so you're able to adjust the audio down or up to match the tone of your piano. So, uh, you know, if the, we're looking at a five foot piano here today, but if you had a seven foot piano, the piano is going to be a lot louder just because of dynamic range of string length in the piano, but your audio is still going to be the same as if it was on a five foot piano. So you'll have to adjust the audio accordingly. So you would slide the audio up, maybe turn the piano volume down and you, you know, to your liking is what you, you would mix it to. Uh, you can always go back and, you know, mute the piano, mute the audio, mute everything give it full expression, the soft play. Uh, some of these options are, are gonna be only available on uh, upgraded versions of the QRS. Today we're looking at the QRS playback, but if you have the playback and record, you're actually able to record with this record button up here and record your own songs and it will play back. Um, also uh, on, on certain versions of the QRS, there is a silent soft mode where you're able to put on headphones and use the piano as a MIDI controller uh, to you know, to, you know, play a, so it's basically a silent system. So you're able to, to play with headphones on, get the full action sound, but not have to, you know, be playing the piano acoustically. Uh, all versions of, of the QRS do have a MIDI uh, option. So you are able to use it as a MIDI controller. What does that mean? It means if you want to use this as an assignable keyboard to say a computer or uh, a MIDI control device, you're able to do that. Uh, there's Bluetooth audio in, there's Bluetooth audio out, um, and so you're able to connect to it with your phone in a whole bunch of different ways that are, um, you know, capable of, you know, playing, you know, music off of your YouTube or somewhere into the piano. That's going to come out of the speaker system. And um, Bluetooth audio out uh, is also going to be able to connect to, uh, you know, a, 
you know, speaker system outside of, outside of the piano. Um, there, is, there is issues with latency, and so there is adjustments to be made with that, that function. So there's always syncing that needs to be done if you're using outside audio devices um, that, aren't, that aren't normally contained in the unit. Um, so if the, if the audio sounds like it's going faster than the piano, those are really easy adjustments that can be made. You'll probably want to call a technician to come out there and see it. Um, so a little bit more about the app, uh, the home button, and the, and, or the, I guess the categories button in the top left corner can take you back to home. Uh, you can play piano, record piano, practice, uh, and, uh, and see more information where you can buy the music and set up the system. Uh, let's go to system setup. Uh, so one of the things that, that is very common to be doing is to get this connected to your internet. So we've talked about how this can connect to this, um, and that's standalone mode. So your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, your ta Android tablet, standalone mode is going to connect this device, whatever's in your hand, to this device, the player piano. And so that doesn't connect to the internet. You know, I know this has potential to connect to the internet, but it's not right now because we've gone to Wi-Fi in here and we've connected directly to this, standalone mode. So no network is being operated right now where we're connected to the internet. Something that you can do, and you have to get into standalone mode at first, is go to network settings in your, in your, in your options menu, um, and, you're, and you basically set up a wireless network on your, through the application. Uh, and so at that point, you can connect your piano to your wireless network. Sometimes you will need um, a wireless, uh, like a hotspot adapter. And so if the, if the network isn't as strong, say you have it out in your front room and your, wi your, uh, your Wi-Fi uh, is way back in, in your bedroom or somewhere else and it's not connecting very strong, the signal's not strong, you might need to get an adapter, a hotspot adapter, which can plug it into the wall real close by and, and give it a stronger signal. Um, if they're both on the same network, so if you connect this to your wireless network and then you keep your phone on your wireless network, then it all has internet connectivity and you're able to access a lot more things like streaming and uh, the, full, the full library, any auto updates that happen. Uh, so that's probably where you wanna get to. Um, and again, that can be, it can be a little difficult if you're not you know, super techie. And so that is something that you should be able to contact a, an IT company to come out and say, hey, we need a stronger Wi-Fi uh, network. And this is not usually something that the piano store will offer because it is kind of more of a technology in your home device. And so they'll, they'll probably uh, recommend a, an IT professional in your area and say, hey, you probably want to talk to them. They can get your network up. They can connect your piano to it. They can connect your phone to it. Um, so that is an option that you might want to get to um, at some point so you can take full advantage of, of, the, of the QRS app. Uh, so let's go back to the, to, let's see here, um, the playlist. And uh, it's really as easy as just finding the song that you like Pressing, pressing it, and then having the piano play. Um, again, changing the volume is easy. Adding a playlist is easy, um, and it's you know it should be um, should be a lot of fun to to get to and dive in deep. Um, and uh, you know the QS app is great because it's auto updates, and so you won't ever have to go and update uh, a full system again, um, and you don't have that chunky box. So this is installed with a very small, you know, a very small box that's underneath the piano. That's one of the nice things about the modern technology of the QRS. Um, it makes it, you know, not a hassle to look at that big old box with a CD-ROM. Um, but yeah, so that is the QRS system, the app, the QRS music app, uh, and some of the functionality that does come with it. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we love to answer uh, different, you know, different questions that you might have. Like, hey, I have this old QRS system. Is it able to be upgraded? QRS does sell that technology. Um, there is a certain cutoff date where they're able to use some of the, the, the previous generation stuff on the new ones. It is something that can be added to any piano. Uh, and you know, it's, it's not a super difficult process, but it does take some time. Uh, and it is, it can be costly. Sometimes it's easier to find pianos that already have the QRS installation happened on them. Uh, but yeah, if you've owned a QRS or if you have one now, you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. QRS is very good about answering questions as well. So calling their direct, direct line, they can walk you through different steps like connecting your device to your phone or getting it on the wireless network or getting that code that you might need to unlock the full potential of your unit. 
Um, please leave comments if you've owned a QRS before, if you've owned maybe a different player system and you say, hey, this one's better or this one uh, I didn't like as much. I think those stories will be helpful. We've had really good luck with our QRS systems here um, and them being you know, exactly as advertised um, and people are very happy having them in their homes. Again, there are different levels. Some of them you're able to record with and some of them are just that playback system. Uh, but please leave comments. Uh, any questions, again, please read out, reach out um, and let us know what you have. Um, and we will help, help or get you to somebody who can help you out as quickly as possible. Again, I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Thank you for watching.